Taub here with NextLevelGuitar.com. Hope all's going well, and I hope your guitar and musical journeys are going famously. And today we're going to work on something that could really help your lead guitar skills, dialing in your string bending and learning per each scale. It's so important when you're learning a scale to certainly get the scale notes under your fingers, but you also want to get the things like the you know, really hip string bends in each scale. Because when that happens and you understand them and how they work and why, that just opens the door to so many licks and so many leads and it just it just makes your guitar uh, playing and improvisation just really start to flow. Because it's not just what you play, the notes that you play, it's how you play them. And that's what it's all about, taking those notes and making music, right? Using those bends and vibratos, and like I was doing some string raking and slides and hammer-ons and pull-offs, the techniques, right? You're taking the notes and you're making them musical. And then we're putting them in a musical context because you can't just play the scale up and back, right? That's not musical. You have to, that's just playing a scale. It doesn't sound like music. You have to take the notes and work them, right? And the string bending is one of the most emotive things you could do on the guitar and that'll really get you sounding musical quickly. I'm in standard tuning and we're using a jam track to um, uh, have some application for these principles and devices, right? And the jam track, I wanna thank Elevated Jam Tracks. They make some really good jam tracks. You can get them at bandcamp.com and I'll put a link here so you can see. Uh, but this track is in the key of D minor. There is just D minor to a C to an F and a B flat the first time. And then the second time through the jam track, D minor, same as before, C, F, this time A. It starts over again. And I was using things like D natural minor scales or the D aeolian mode over all the chords. You can also use, I also used a little D minor pentatonic and blues, right? But I really want you to try to get used to the diatonic scales, the seven note scales, because that gives us more bending opportunities, right? Because we have half steps. As opposed when you use minor pentatonic, it's all whole steps or three frets, minor thirds. And if you have a second, please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us to keep the content coming, right? And then you'll be notified when we have new lessons posted. Leave a comment below. Let us know what lessons you'd like to see coming up. Let us know how you like this lesson. And if you like the video, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up, share it, and thank you so much for your support. So here's something that I think you could really use throughout your playing. When you're learning a new scale, learn the scale and the notes of the scale, but also learn how to bend the notes of the scale and which notes are the hip and cool bends, right? So let's do that. So let's take a D natural minor, D aeolian scale. We'll take the one off of the 10th fret root on the low E string. And by the way, for the lesson, I have the delay turned off and I have the distortion way down. I just have a little gain and some reverb. That's it. Um, so this is the scale we're going to work with today. in D natural minor are D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. Now we're back to D. Then just repeat. So first off, you always want to know where your root notes are in the scale, right? So we have a D here at the 10th fret Louis string. We have another D here at the 12th fret on the uh, D string. And then we have another D up here on the high E string on the 10th fret. And just so you know, also there's a D here on the 15th fret of the B string. And if you wanna see this scale and so many others diagrammed out on paper, cause sometimes it helps to have that visual connection, right? Um, I'll tell you what, click on that link in the YouTube description box below. I'll send you my killer largest rock blues soloing ebook. It's packed with like 29 scale diagrams, has lessons on soloing strategy, major minor key, music theory. It's a great reference tool. And I'll pair it with a free video lesson too on easy ways to spice up your soloing. I'll send them both to you for free. The video lesson, which is extended play, it's not on YouTube, and the killer ebook. Get both for free, just click on that link below. So if we take the top three strings on that scale, the first thing you want to do is let's look at the half step bends, right? And you really want to milk these, especially if you're playing in this rock or blues rock or melodic type soloing. So you have 12th to 13th, there's a half step. So you want to bend that 12th to the 13th fret, right? And always check to see that you're bending in pitch. So that's a great half step bend right there, bending that ninth to the flat third. And then you have another half step on the G string and then another on the B string. So on each string, you'll have a half step bend. So on the B string, 
we have that bend. We have the uh, tenth fret to the eleventh fret. See? You want to bend that A note to the B flat. You didn't check it. See, the licks are just coming in the head already, just from experimenting on each string. And on the half step bends, I'll often bend those with one finger. On whole step bends, I'll usually use as many fingers as I can, three or four, just because it gives you more strength, more control. And on the G string, you have that bend where we're bending the ninth fret, bending that E note to the F note. Right, so you always wanna... For bends like that, I also give it a, like a little turn of my finger or the wrist. See that? And, uh, and, uh, same thing on that B string. I tend to bend that one up. On the G, I bend down for the half step. And then a high E. All right, those are three killer half step bends right within that scale. So you could start putting your licks together. Okay, there's all on that high E string to the B string to the G string and then kind of resolve a lot of your licks to the root note. Those are the three half step bends that are super cool. And now some whole step bends that are really neat to do. On the B string, I like bending with, now notice too, all four fingers down, one finger per fret, right? And I'll bend that C note to the root note, D. So you're bending a whole step now. So you wanna make sure you hit that note. I always kind of rake into my bends too. See, I'm muting the strings. So you get that muted sound into the bend. Uh, so I'm bending that C to the D, that's a whole step bend. And really cool. Now on the high E string, you could do that. Uh, and by the way, that's 13 to 15th fret. You could also do 13 to 15th on the high E. So you're bending that F to the G. Another really good bend in that scale. Check your bend. So on the G string, you could do a couple of things as far as bends. Um, if you incorporate the blue note right there, A flat. You could do a little half step bend. back to our root note. So that's a nice bend on the G string, but because you have our blue note, then you have the next note in the scale, which is A, you could also do a whole step bend. That time we did a whole step, and then a half step. So you could do whole step bends, or half step. For that bluesy favorite flavor on the G string. Don't forget, back it up to that ninth fret like we did before and you have that half step bend. You resolve to your D note, right? So why don't we let that marinate a bit and I want you to practice that. Get all those bends in pitch, right? Using that D natural minor scale. Put on a jam track, just get lost in it and really hear the sounds of those bends and make sure you're bending in pitch. And really work the notes like you heard me doing in the intro and I'll play in the outro too, you know, because it's not just what you play, the notes that you play, it's how you play them. And that's what it's all about, taking those notes and making music. Hope you enjoyed that lesson. Stay tuned. Lots more killer content and lessons coming. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. That really helps us to keep the content coming, as well as then you'll be notified when we have new lessons posted. And don't forget to click on that link in the YouTube description box below and get my free killer rock blues soloing ebook. It's packed with scale diagrams and soloing strategies. It's paired with a killer video lesson that's extended play. It's not on YouTube. It's a killer one-two punch. I'll send them both to you for free. Just click on that link below. And if you want to hear some of these lead techniques, techniques and devices within the structure of a song. I recently dropped a new record with my original band Mind Cell. We're based out of San Diego, California. It's a slamming record. I'm really stoked about it. I think it's some of the best music I've ever written. It's streaming on all the platforms. I'll put links to that below in the YouTube description box. Check it out. I hope you like it. Let me know how you like it. If you have any questions maybe on the leads or the songs, the gear I use, the studio techniques, drop me a line. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for your support over the years and years. So appreciated. Keep up all that hard work on those guitars. Keep having fun with them. Enjoy the journey. And remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care, rock on. I'll see you in the next lesson.